Hello and welcome. Let's secure some of our content today. And the first thing we need to do is get a delicious cookie parser and just put it right under our body parser. So cons cookie parser will equal require. And it is cookie dash parser. And we need to install that as well. So yarn add cookie dash parser. With that added, just go to right under your body parser, before your routes. Make sure this is before your routes, app.use. And this is a very simple one, cookie parser function. That's it, now we have access to the cookies coming back to us. We're going to need to decode them and then we're going to need to use some of it to authenticate a user. So let's head to our auth controller and set that up. Now. I'm just going to organize this a tiny bit. I've just started with this JWT up here. This will be all the JSON web token stuff. And then we have API. That'll be all of our sign up and login. Anything that has an endpoint, we'll put in the API. And what we're doing is called a middleware. So in the middleware functions here is where we're going to do our work. One of them is a JSON web token decoder. So that probably I'll push back into the JWT section after we're done with it. All right, so the first thing to work on is our decryption. So let's const decrypt JWT like so. So that function will be an async function. It's going to take in a uh, we'll say token. We're going to call it a token here. Uh, okay. Give your fat arrow function and we'll get started on it. I want to use promiseify because we couldn't do a callback with this, but we've been doing everything with async await. Uh, so I want to keep the format looking kind of the same. And luckily we have a utility that has something called promiseify that's already installed. So just go ahead, const open up an object, type in promiseify and equals require util. Bring that in and we can make this into an async await style function as well, because for some reason you can't do it the normal way when we want to jwt.verify. So const jwt verify, oops, spelled that wrong, verify, and that will be promiseify Okay, so let me talk through this because there's a lot going on here. So we're going to make this function turn into a promise. JWT, that's our JSON web token package. That's what we brought in up top right here. Okay, so just like we use JWT.sign over here, JWT.verify. So jwt.verify is another function coming from that jwt and we've made it into a promise now. Now we're just going to return await. Oh, and now what does jwt verify do? We're going to call jwt verify this way to be our const here. I keep on putting an A, verify this way. Now in there, it needs to take in the token. So the token is what's being passed to this function. It's the JWT, it's the JSON web token. So that's the token that it is, but we also need to give it our secret so it can decode the token. So our JWT secret. So that's how we're going to decrypt JSON web tokens. It's that quick, that simple. Move over to securing something. Exports.secure. We're going to go about this a little slowly so we can walk through it. So this will be an async request response and next. We need next because if we don't call next in a middleware function, it's going to get stuck there. It'll die there. It won't go to the uh, next point in the next node. So here we are in secure. Let us, I don't want to do JWT. So let's let a token. Okay. So this is a token and right now it's going to be undefined. If request.cookies. So if there are request.cookies, we want the the uh, token, we'll call it, to equal request.cookies. Uh, oh, I think it's request.cookie. Let me see. No, it's cookies. Great. Request.cookies. Uh, we called ours JWT. So that's what we labeled our cookie. If we go up to the top in the cookies area, you'll see when we make a cookie, 
we label it JWT. Res.cookie, JWT is the name of it. Uh, so when we get it back here from our cookie parser and we have all of our cookies, the one we're looking for is JWT. And this can be named anything, you just have to change that everywhere. So what I'm saying is if there are cookies, this token is that cookie. Now, we also still have to check if this is empty. So if there's no token now, so if for some reason there were cookies parsed, but they couldn't find the JWT one, we want to send back a failure, unauthorized, whatever it is, right away. So what we'll do here is just return, because that'll end this whole function. So we'll return res.status, Uh, that'll be 401 is unauthorized. And then dot JSON. Now let's give them back a status of unauthorized. And let's also give them a message of you are not authorized to view uh, this content. So that's if we can't find the token at all. If the, if the user is not logged in, we won't have a token at all, and we'll just get turned away. The next thing we want to do is actually find out what's on this token. So const JWT info. So this is what we're going to receive after we await the decrypt JWT, which we just made before. And what are we passing in there? We're letting token, we're passing in token. Now, JWT info has a few things in it. I'd love for you to see them. Console log JWT info. This will come through the console when we get to it. Um, it has a few things, uh, including the ID that is saved in our database. So we can find this user, which is what we want to do. Const user will equal await. And we want that user. That's the schema that we made before. Find by ID is what we want. And now we'll take the JWT info. This is the de decrypted token. This is where we can actually read some stuff off of it, dot ID, because the ID will be on there. Now, after this, anything protected by this, and we're going to walk through this just in a moment, so just follow, follow the language first. So anything protected by secure, anything with secure in front of it, if it has a shield of secure in front of its route, it has to go through this first. And after it goes through this, I wanna make something available to the following route. So if this is a route where you need a user to be logged in just to see what's on the page, I know that it might be valuable for all of those functions to be able to have the user's info without decrypting his JWT token again. So let's do request.user, so we're making, ooh, we're making a request.user. And it's just going to be equal to the user. So when we get a user back from this, we're going to have request.user equals user. And now after all of this, we can say next. There's one more thing uh, that we can run into for a problem. Now, if they have a token labeled JWT and we wait for this user, they can't find the user, what happens then? We can just do this again. This is a little dirty and I hope that will fix this, honestly. I don't like writing this twice at all. Uh, but here, here's what we are going to do. If no user, so if it's, this comes back empty, we are going to say unauthorized. You're not allowed to view this content as well. If you see what I did there, I just took the if no token stuff and I put it where it's right after the user and made an if no user stuff, which makes this a very ugly function. And uh, it's fixable, but for teaching, I think this is looking pretty good. And on your next, uh, make sure that's a function. Perfect. Okay, so we have this set up and I did some explaining on how secure works. Let's actually go to the auth routes and look at how secure will work. So anything put after router.use, so router.use, and it'll say auth controller.secure. So anything put after that has to pass that function before going to the next function, whether it be an endpoint or another middleware, it has to pass through secure 
first. So let's make some content that is behind that. So we'll do router route. Um, let's call it secret uh, content. Uh, that'll be the secret content route. Uh, you're going to need a slash before that. Okay, when we route to secret content dot get, we're going to get auth controller dot, uh, let's just call it secret content. We're making this just to show how secure works. This is not going to be an important function. It's just going to do nothing but return secret content to the front end. So let's go to the auth controller, make this. I guess I'll put this above the middlewares because this is an API endpoint. It'll exports the secret content equals, we really don't need async. We'll just do it out of habit. Uh, request response. Really want to get rid of that ace. I'm going to get rid of it now. <laughs> uh, request response. And in there, let's just return the status uh, right here. Uh, the status will be 200, and we'll write secret content shown. So these people are able to see that secret content. Now, they shouldn't be able to see the secret content unless they pass the secure function. Our secure middleware is protecting the secret content here. Now, we need to test all of this. We wrote a lot of code. So let's walk through it here one more time. We're going to hit this secure route. The secure route is going to let in token, which means nothing right now, it's undefined. If there are request.cookies, token equals request.cookies.jwt. That's what we named our cookie, our JSON web token. That's what we named it, JWT. If there is no token now, so it went to there and returned undefined, we will return a message of unauthorized and so on. Now. If there is a token, we're going to await decrypt JWT with the token, and we should get JWT info from that. Okay, we wrote that function up here, we promisified, and we are returning the JWT.verify. So it's telling us this token, this is what it means. It takes our secret and decodes it. So we're going to take that information that we get and try to get ourselves a user by awaiting user.findbyID with the token ID, because it'll be an ID coming from the decryption. It'll be JWT info.id. Now, if there's no user, I do also want to say you're unauthorized, you can't come in. Uh, the final thing we're doing is anything past this. And we're now saying request.user is available to you, and it has all of this user's information on it. So you don't need to decode any tokens or anything to get user info after this. That's already done, so I'm going to pass it on down the line to the next functions. So this request.user will technically be available in secret content. And we can actually say console.log and we will say uh, rec user. And after that, let me just put it on two different lines. Uh, Request.user. So that info should be in there as well. So we have a lot of stuff to test here. Head to the client. We're actually not done building, but this is really quick. This is really quick. Head to the client, head to header. And we're going to do a very, very quick build here of one more button. Just take this, take where it has logout div to div. And above that, paste it, change it to secret, all capitals. Uh, you don't need to make it all capitals. I'm just doing that. Um, and we'll call this uh, get secret. And it's pretty much exactly the same as this. So few things change. I'll walk through them slowly with you so we don't make any mistakes. But paste down logout user, change it to get secret. And now the first thing we have to do is it's no longer logout. Where are we going? Secret content. And it's going to be a get. Cool. Get and secret content. Cool. And then we'll have console log res, the error, the error response. Perfect. On click, we're getting a secret. This is all set up right away. Save this. Now, if you haven't built out your dependencies, please do that now. Um, I will as well. 
make sure you cd into client to build the client dependencies as well. Now just yarn run dev and let's see if this is all working. Here we are and here's our secret over here. All right, here is an area. We actually, if you right now, if you have a cookie and it's a valid cookie, you should be able to get the secret information. So if you logged in recently, uh, you should be able to get the secret information. So I suggest that you log out first, that'll kill your cookie. And then you try to get your secret information. And we got nothing back on secret. Let's see what happened. Oh, I see what happened here. Okay, so it's saying the adjacent web token is malformed. Okay, that is a good bug to find right away. Remember when we did this auth controller where we wanted the logout to give them expired token. Now, we actually have to make sure it doesn't say expired token down here. And if it does, we're going to have to go ahead and send them an unauthorized back there as well. See how ugly this is getting. We're going to have to refactor this at some point. So actually, you know, let's just put them both up here. This will be fine. Um, so if no token or uh, token equals the string of expired token, you're unauthorized. All right, cool bug fix that should do it. Let's see what happens now. That's all right. Now we're going to try again to go to secret and see what happens. Okay, we have data coming back, unauthorized. You are not authorized to view this content. So this content is protected. Great, now let's see if we can get to it after logging in. I know I have user2 at user.com and password. All right, and we see that we have info coming back here. It's 200, status okay. Now, did it tell us what we wanted to tell us, which is a status of secret content shown? Yes, it did. So we did protect that route and we did it pretty smoothly. That went, that went quickly. Uh, we learned how to decode a JSON web token and how to protect routes. Now, I'd like to secure routes for certain people to have, like if I have an admin, I want him to be able to get the places where a normal user can't get to. So I think that'll be really important, especially if you wanna do tiered level users in, in whatever uh, web app that you're doing or any app at all that you're doing. Uh, this would be the way to do it is to label one uh, user, uh, you could label one an admin, uh, one could be staff, and they could have kind of different permissions that you write into the back backend uh, with the middleware. So let's make that middleware in the next video. Thanks for being with me on this one. You did a great job. If you came this far, you wrote pretty much an entire authentication system here and secured routes. That's awesome. I'll see you on the next one.